Hey everyone, this is Mike. Uh, before we get started this month, I wanted to introduce this episode a little bit. Back in June, I did an interview with a friend of mine, uh, Annie Vandermeer Mitsoda. We talked for about two hours, and I only used a tiny fraction for that podcast. So for this month's Chaotic Stupid podcast, uh, we're going to do the rest of that interview. Annie and I cover a lot of topics, from Kickstarter to uh, interview questions when you interview for design positions. Annie is a designer and a writer. Uh, I worked with her first at Obsidian. Uh, I was working on a, a, an Aliens game that got canceled, and she was working on Alpha Protocol. She had also worked on Neverwinter Nights 2 while she was there. Uh, and then after that, she worked on Guild Wars and later on uh, Destiny at Bungie. And now she runs her own company uh, called Double Bear, and their game is Dead State. And we talk a little bit about that also. Enjoy! So, uh, I, I always do an intro, not, not an intro, an introduction for them. So I'll say something. It'll probably sound weird. And then I'll say, I'm Mike Stout. And then you say, and my name is Annie. Or you can, you could say all or part of your name, or you could say that your say- name is the dolphin lady. It's, it's fine. <laughs> no, I'll, uh, uh, I'll give my full name because once, uh, when I, when I got married and I added the Vandermeer in there, uh, my lead on Guild Wars 2 said Vandermeer Minnesota sounds like a Shadowrun name. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. That's seriously one of the best compliments I've gotten. I don't get a lot of compliments. <laughs> on the, on the Minnesota? On the, no, 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 the, the, like, he's like, not the Annie part, but Vandermeer Minnesota oh, sounds okay. like a Shadowrun name. And I was just like, fucking dope. <laughs> At the very least, it's sort of a, uh, uh, masquerade, vampire. Huh? <laughs> vampire slash mage Dark, yeah. What was that? Dark uh, World of Darkness. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah, it does. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll try some sort of introduction. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Mike. Uh, I'm Annie Vandermeer Mitsoda. And uh, today we're going to talk about something, and we don't even know what it is. So do you have any ideas for things to talk about? I'm an, uh, I have no idea. <laughs> Usually it's like, um, actually no, I'll be totally obvious. Uh, I'm bad at podcasts. <laughs> Not like bad. I'm. Uh, I have a lot of fun doing streaming stuff. Um, but like, I follow direction <laughs> really well, or I just sort of go with the flow of things. And when I, um, uh, when I'm usually on streaming for uh, ladies playing indies, which is something that uh, these press this media thing uh bitch team alpha does Mm -hmm. i just follow along with whatever's going on there and we end up talking about a million different things um and when i tried to do a podcast interview before it was october so i was like in the thick of um of crunch time oh man i don't know how insane i sounded but i'm (laughs) betting on a scale of one to ten it was um Probably in the 30s. So is this, <laughs> this is like a puzzle fighter level of insanity then. Oh yeah, no, uh, <laughs> it's like when I'm on when I'm on panels, I say that I I basically go into a fugue state, not the sort of like red haze that right. I <laughs> enter when playing <laughs> Super Smash Brothers, like not that bad, um, but like. Uh, and apparently it turns out well on panels, uh, but I hardly, I hardly have any memory of what I actually talked about, like just little glimpses, and I have no memory of cursing. Like one time, uh, I was on a panel, an RPG panel, um, with, uh, Travis and Brian and John Gonzalez, who, uh, Travis worked with, um, on, uh, I think this was 2009. He worked with him on, uh, New Vegas, Fallout New Vegas. And before the panel, I was like, I'm gonna try really hard and not curse you guys. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do my best. And after the panel, I was like, I think I did pretty good. And Martin snort laughed at me. And he was like, you, li- you cursed, you said f- in your introduction. <laughs> You're like, I'm Andy Vandermeer Minnesota. I uh I worked on Neverwinter Nights 2 and Guild Wars 2 and some other fucking games. 
Like, did that you, is literally the thing that came out you, of my mouth. No memory of that. Did you None. ever see my uh, GDC talk on Skylanders? You didn't have, uh, See, I didn't even know that you had one. It's up, I it's, suck at being a friend. I'm sorry. It's up on uh, <laughs> on the GDC vault. Oh, right. You linked that, and I was like, oh, I need to watch that. I'm, but the, the thing is, is uh, they, they do this thing, like, before the day before the talks start, where all of the people who are going to give talks uh, give, like, 20 seconds or something about why people should come talk come listen to their talk oh god an elevator pitch basically an elevator pitch and i started mine off with what's up f- <laughs> oh mike you're I, the best <laughs> i think i think i got more people because of it because uh uh i knew i was going to be doing it across the hall from notch oh my god <laughs> so i thought maybe maybe i'll do a little extra you know cursing and see if i can get some people to show up get the f- in my panel, assholes. <laughs> hey, it was actually pretty full. <laughs> I actually started off the panel with being like, "You guys do know notches over there, right?" It's every no one's gonna like leave in the middle of my talk, right? <laughs> Just to get this out of the way, he's like right over there. He's you- maybe maybe if you uh, put you know take off your underwear, or hopefully if you actually have a better piece of underwear you haven't worn and just should write a game design pitch in your email or something on the inside of it on the like, inside of the just, underpants yeah and just <laughs> wad it and throw it at him that's what i assume happens when he uh when he comes to talk at places because they're like we hear you have your own candy fountain like it's money <laughs> i think like, at, at that time there was some sort of huge controversy because you know like every 10 seconds notch was involved unwittingly in some sort of huge controversy oh yeah uh it was one of those times so i figured there would be a lot of people wanting to see what he would say it was his fireside chat oh boy yeah you get to be that big of a window uh windmill every motherfucker is gonna tilt at you has a lance but uh those people missed my my talk on how we did combat design in skylander so you know that shows them something. Yeah. <laughs> Even though mine's available, you know, for free, it certainly showed them somehow. Mm-hmm. Just as long as it showed them in your heart, that's what matters. Yeah. <laughs> I think. That's what I tell myself constantly. <laughs> it's just, it's just whatever I can keep in here. Yeah. Uh, so tell me, tell me about what's up with Dead State right now. Okay, Dead State actually just released a massive update. Massive, massive. Massive is, update? Uh, it's, it's so huge, son. Uh, <laughs> and we've sort of, it's, it's conceptually our sort of uh, director's cut. We sort of subtitled it Reanimated. Because Dead State, um, uh, in case you haven't played it, it's a zombie survival RPG with an emphasis on survival. Is that a good way to yep, describe it? That is. We, yeah. we, we uh, have said it's the zombie game about humans. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the Romero sort of style of like zombies aren't the, the biggest threat. It's actually surviving. It's dealing with uh, uh, humanity in a crisis. Um, right. The zombies are more of a metaphor. Yes. <laughs> if we just like, if just stapled like metaphor to their chest. <laughs> Arr, metaphor. But they'll also eat your brains. Don't, don't get them wrong. Well, I actually put in a loading screen quote that said zombies don't actually, or the undead actually don't eat brains. They prefer spleens. And I meant for that to appear like, you know, a thousandth of the time, but it was just like, no, but it appears all the time now. And I'm oh. like, shit. <laughs> The RNG will screw you over every time on those. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it is free for anybody, uh, who has bought the game already. Um, it is, I mean, it's, it's part of the game right now. So if you haven't played Dead State, now is the best time to do it. Um, nice. On Steam, yeah? Yeah, it's on Steam and good old games. Cool. And, uh, we actually have a free demo. Uh, we've, we've had one since like January, but now it's been updated, uh, with all the reanimated stuff. So if you're like, well, I don't know, a classic strategy RPG seems like a lot of work. Um, <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm not saying you talk that way. I'm just giving an example. <laughs> um, just run. You want to try that again? Uh, I'll, uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm a spaz no matter what. I can't dress it up. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the demo's free. It's about the first uh, week of the game. The game is several, I mean, months long, so it's like both a good representative chunk and also the game is super long. Um, and uh we love we love hearing feedback um on on our forums and on our steam forums 
Uh, so yeah, check it out. Uh, let us know. We try to be really active on those. And I actually just spent time um, working with the the guys who did the official wiki of it on uh, Gameopedia to make sure everything was updated. You know, we did little uh, some balance tweaks and things like that. So That's when cool. you go That's there, cool. it's like, okay, it's all updated to the reanimated stuff. Well, those are the real faithful, right? So it's it's yeah. usually a real pleasure to interact with people who take that much time oh, to yeah. show that they love the thing that you worked on. No, our, our community is incredible. Like, you know, like trying to play an RPG that's in development is like, that. I mean, they, they never... RPGs are, are wonderful, tricky bastards. Um, they, they they are holistic. They work as holes, yeah. not necessarily as parts. Yeah. yeah, and it's really something that you, you kind of can't see the the greater shape of till it's done because because stuff lasts for so long. You can hop mm, in the middle yeah. of of a an RPG in development and be like, oh, you know, this quest is fun, and then it just stops halfway through because the game needs to be more done for the, the quest line to be finished, <laughs> yep. or like features yeah. are, are not in yet, and it's like people were demanding to, they're like we want the game on early access, we want to be able to, to play it, and we're like, well, you know and I, I should say that's another reason where I'm just like, when people are like early access is a cash grab, it's like, no it's not, it's, it's really valuable it's a lot of work for, for indie developers to have it as a as a tool and yeah, it is a it is a huge amount of work, and it's a huge risk too. Yeah, because people oh, yeah. can see that oh, and be like, "Well, this game sucks." It's like, "Well, it's not." Or, this game feels like it's not done. It isn't. <laughs> it isn't. I promise you, it's not, and it will be finished. And I think there's some people who who tend to see early stuff that goes up in early access as being a cash grab that will never result in the the actual game being done. And well, I don't and that, know... That also was a Kickstarter too, right? And people yeah. say the same thing about Kickstarters, yeah. but they're super hard. Oh, they're yeah, so God. hard. They're, 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 they're hard and they're getting harder. Like You have hundreds at, of bosses instead of just one publisher. Yeah. And it's a situation where it's like, look, look at what games could ask you know, from Kickstarter in 2012, and look what they can ask for now. Oh like yeah, how, how much was Dead State? Uh, Dead State, was... we were asking for uh, 150, and we got uh, 332. K. Nice. That, nice. I mean, it was amazing. It was amazing, and yeah. and I'm still just bowled over um, all the time when when we'd show it at PAX Prime, and somebody would come up and be like, "Oh, I backed you." I just like. I don't know how many people really like to get hugged, but I wanted to hug them. I at least gave them like <laughs> high fives Thank and Thank you fist so bumps. much. I just, there's, I'm so grateful. And part of me is just like, oh, can't believe it. Like I, I back stuff and I'm really, really happy to back stuff. Um, and I almost don't even pay attention to like rewards from it. Like, oh, cool. Like I'm just happy it's happening. Um, but yeah, no, the, our backers are incredible. Our, our community is amazing. And we had people in the community that were just, they gave so much of their time towards something that was, I mean, like any bug that helped with, with screenshots, with providing, mm -hmm. uh, um, save games. And our, our two community managers, I have to give them a shout out, uh, who go by the handles Drunk Zombie and Kaidas. This is not their full time job. Right, yeah, yeah. They're not employed by Double Bear, but they work so fing hard. And and we we got a chance to meet both of them at the launch party and they're just they're incredible dudes. They work so hard and they're so sweet and they're so enthusiastic for the game. And um for also for a launch party we had one of our you know, uh five K backers come in and just the Wow. I I seriously just wanted to hug the dude and cry and be like, thank you, thank you, this is a dream. And just to make an ass of myself, like, I, well, well, I do that anyway, but, like, just, I mean, anybody who buys anything that I make, uh, I'm, I'm really humbled about. Yeah. Oh, and, especially once you get to the point where kids come up to you and they're like, I grew up oh with your God. games, playing them with my dad after they got divorced, and it got me and him through it. Thank you so much. Right? Like that sort of thing. Oh, my God. Oh no, my God. that legitimately happened to you. This has happened to me many, many times. Oh, my God. I would have just started to cry. Well, I did in, in one case, cry. man. It was it was rough. Like, yeah, this it that's that's oh sort of a God. message I, I hear a lot. But not just it. like anybody who worked on Ratchet gets that. Because it was long enough ago that the yeah. people who were the target age when Ratchet 1 came out are like 24 now. Yeah. Right? So it's, <laughs> it, it, you know, so really, like, it was 
Mario for them because yeah. it was as long ago for me or for them as Mario was for me when I was their age, you know? You're like right. It's, that is that is the one to one. It's a it's a really crazy situation to get into and you just feel this sense of humility but also responsibility that you didn't ask for, you know? It's like, yeah. wow, okay, I need to be careful. Yeah. I mean, uh, so so the really funny thing is in my head like I I remember when when you interviewed at Obsidian, you said that the job of the designer, more than anything else, is to speak for the player, and that really resonated with me. And I, I quote you on that all the time to everybody. Yay. But like, I, there's two different ways I I sort of interact with that thought, and mm -hmm. one is, and the main one for me is on a conceptual level, like the player is a concept. Yeah, yeah. And that's how my brain just parses shit. But then when like the game is gonna come out, and I start going like, wait a minute. This concept, these are real people who are going to be playing it. <laughs> um, I can't just shy as shit. I'm just like, oh, 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 oh my God. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you like, mean. I, I was interviewing it at, uh, at Bungie and Jason Jones was like, oh, how many, you know, what sort of audience do you want for your work? How many people can you, you know, imagine want to, to see something that you make? And I was just like, the people that it touches are good. Like, I don't really think about it. And it was at that point I'd realized that, a, you know, I'd worked on Guild Wars 2 and it shipped and it had sold 3 million copies. Oh, and, yeah, like, literally yeah. in the middle of the interview, when I thought that, my brain fucking broke. Like, right in the middle of the interview, I, I kind of started stammering. I'm like, I'm, s I'm sorry, I just realized something I made sold what it did. No, no, no. <laughs> like, that's not a fucking number you can park. There's, well, yeah, I mean, like, the, uh, like, how can you understand a billion dollars? Yeah, no, uh, bleh. Or, like, <laughs> it's and it's not, not, it's not money that we're getting. No. So how, it's not even like you can look <laughs> at it, right? All you can no. see is like, people cared enough about this that they spent, you know, that three million people spent their time and money yeah. to play. Yeah, yeah, and you could, you can throw out like, bullshit facts where you're like the number of dollars if you lay them in and reach the moon and your brain goes gosh that's far but that's oh, yeah. not a fucking number you can deal with like i think people can parse about a thousand maybe in, in yeah. terms of numbers but like and the the thing is too like if five people bought my game i'm still just like holy shit yeah. like i can't i don't know if it's there's never a point i think where i'm like well more people should do it because <laughs> of the quality of my work here, Flip. Like, just bam. <laughs> and also, I have to, one more thing, tying back to the interviews, I totally repeatedly <laughs> steal, I do give you credit in the uh -huh. context, uh, the best, the best interview question for a designer that I've ever, ever heard is, uh, the one that you had. Oh, uh, which one was it? That's, um, because it gets people to, to approach it in a very natural way, going, okay, tell me about a genre that you love. Uh -huh. Like, why do you love it? You know, let's, let's, let's talk about it a little bit. Okay, now let's talk about a genre that you hate, because people love bitching about things. Like, what are the yeah, things yeah. about that that genre that, you, that annoy you? Uh, okay, you are going to make me, and I, I want you to just tell me about it, you don't have to write it down, uh, a game in the genre that you hate. Yeah, oh, I remember Bringing doing, in elements yeah. of the genre you love. I just, I, oh, I was over I the moon meant, at that. I thought you were talking about the uh, Obsidian test. Yeah, that's a test I give to people. Yeah, no, that yeah, this is yeah, vintage yeah. you. Then it just blew my mind because it's like, it's a great way to get people to engage in a way that doesn't, and like, right out the bat make them intimidated and kind of concerned about it. They're not expecting it as a question that they can't answer. And it gets yeah, them I mean, to good, look at it's something. It's good game design, right? Yeah. Like, you design your design test as if you were a game designer trying to get your players to give you the information exactly. you want them to. Exactly, and it gets you to start from a sort of emotional and, and kind of resonant core, but look at things in a very granular way. Mm -hmm. Like, why do I love the things that I love? Like, or why do I really dislike the things that I dislike and and it gets you to to sort of understand that even stuff that you like is you know or, or even stuff that you really dislike is not it's parts of it it's not this sort of yeah unsalvageable yeah. whole and the same thing with the stuff you like it's mm -hmm. there's a nugget in there that you like and when you pry it out make sure you don't get 
Well, I'm mixing metaphors. I was going to say the bathwater. Yeah, well, no, that's the thing. Like, it's not a, a – the reason you like the – it's like you don't like every action game, right? You don't like every shooter. You don't like – you you to, to like something from a genre is like you can you can prefer that genre, but you mm-hmm. don't just – love everything within it. There are reasons why. There's elements that speak to you. There like, are things it does better than other games in the yeah. same genre, which is why you like it. And finding that thing and not all of the other things means that when you pull out the, the nugget of gold, you don't also get the nugget of dung. Yes. <laughs> you, don't, you don't find the dross. Like, like for, <laughs> for, for me, like I love RPGs. One of the reasons is manipulative. Manipula- oh my god, am I going to be able to say this word? Manipulatability? I can manipulate Oh, that's a hard it. word. I don't even know if it is a f***ing word or if I just made it up so I sound like an asshole on a podcast. It's a word now. Manipulatability. Um, Manipulable. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody try to say it. Um but it like I can I can get my hands into something and, and change it. I feel like it reacts to me. And uh-huh. I don't like sports games because I feel like I'm separated from that. Like, here are your guys and they have these stats and that's what they are. Um, sports game is the number one answer to the question what genre don't you like when you ask designers, by the way. There is an internal I think dislike or, or th- there's a weird sort of split i think between developers of sports games and developers of other genres i was just got like it's super unfair cuz i mean they it seems like the, the designer of an nfl game is the nfl though right like that's one of their main reasons yeah. i'm not that interested in it yeah but there's also a point where it's like there's a lot of translation that has to happen there yeah um, yeah and yeah. i was thinking about it where it's just like would you say that a designer of a D&D game is is Wizards of the Coast? Like it's not going to be the same. Like yeah. you have to you have to make adaptations between mediums. Uh-huh. Uh, and I have been there <laughs> seeing Hollywood writers try to write like just shoehorn a movie into a game and just being like, "Good, no." Oh. Oh, I've been there too. Oh, oh I, you've I, been one there time, probably much did, more than me. But did, did I tell you about the time we paid uh, some some Hollywood writers two million dollars to write ten pages? Oh my god! That's the best story. Oh my god! That's the whole story. That's that's all the story that gets told in public. That reminds me of <laughs> when um, uh, Martin was talking about how uh, R.A. Salvatore got paid like half a million dollars to write the story for, I think it was, uh, Quake 3. Oh, right. <laughs> to which everybody responds, wait, there was a story in Quake 3? And it's like, yes, I guess. Like, wasn't that a multiplayer arena game? Like, it was! <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, maybe not the best. <laughs> I mean, the the money spent on Nine Inch Nails for the soundtrack is a good <laughs> investment. Yeah. The money spent on, you know, mm. a, a deep story for an arena-based shooter, probably not. Yeah screeched in disbelief when we were just, I think it was just searching through something on IMDb and it was like, how does Street Fighter 4 have six f***ing writers? <laughs> <laughs> well, probably the first five didn't make it. Right? <laughs> They're just like, that's, I can't? <laughs> in my experience, that's how you end up with that many writers. It's like the, you gotta give them all credit because you can't not credit them, right? In case you use one word yeah. that they used, right? So you 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 give them credit, but then uh, like the eternal line, uh, the two lines that are really well known in in X Men are the uh, like oh, it's prove it to you, you're a dick, and you know what happens to a toad when it gets hit by lightning, like. Those are Whedon lines. <laughs> I know because a friend of mine uh, met David Hayter and somebody yelled those lines at him and he made this really long suffering wince and he was like, those are Whedon's lines. And it's like, oh, that writer wins. <laughs> oh, that writer wins. And you're just like, mm, yes. Yes. Nice. <laughs> I'm so jealous of nice. my friend. And she's like, oh, the yeah. The same I thing that happens to everybody else. I mean, you, and you can see that's a Whedon line. It's 100% a Whedon line. Tony won't watch things usually that Joss Whedon does because of what he calls weed speak. <laughs> and basically, it's it's the way that every character in a Joss Whedon film is the most clever character mm-hmm. and none of them laugh at each other. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. And and the thing is, is a lot of people really dig it. Like, mm-hmm. I dig it in some of the stuff he did and not some of the stuff he did. Yeah. But he, he can't stand it. Anytime they went into Weed Speak, he's well, like, that's did like, you realize there's no scene in Avengers that doesn't end in a joke? That's like all of Iron Man's lines. But he's like the perfect... Tony Stark is like the perfect Whedon-y character. Like, yeah. it yeah, makes yeah, yeah, sense yeah. that he, sh- he should speak that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He should... He's distilled snark. <laughs> Tony Snark. Oh, that's really good. Can we make? Can I? Can I get a promise from you and your your Patreon that you call me back for an episode that? Uh, I'm, this is sad because I'm like I don't know how many people will listen to this, but I just want to talk about the shit in games that I made that I was just like I hope people see this and I just don't want yeah. people to miss because the um, people love people love those episodes. The amount of shit that that designers putting on them, especially like some are like wonky like you work l- like long hours and some are just little pet things you just put in a game and you're just like please somebody find this well tony and i spent 20 minutes in one episode talking about crates oh i remember i think because, i saw that one i think i saw that one crate placement is a perfect example of that right you just think like when you're playing a game you just think the crates are fully spawned like yeah. athena popping out of zeus's just head like, or some shit, right yeah but someone went and purposely put every single one in the spot where it is oh yeah the amount of like super precise like nitpicky little placement of stuff that i did in dead state like size this thing i'm gonna turn this around i had one person bless bless this person that was a beta tester um called a placement i did of like a tipped over garbage can as a blocker in a in a level insulting, <laughs> and I was like insulting. Really, of course. Again, it was me. Like I I have what I call my butt hurt interval, <laughs> which is like when somebody talks shit on something, and I'm just like like the butt hurt comes on, and I I can't deal with it for a amount of time. Like it used to be my when I was a young designer, a baby designer, my butt hurt interval was like a day, uh-huh. and I've worked it down to like an hour. Oh well, that's good. I, I and my butt like, hurt interval is probably way longer than an hour. <laughs> it depends on the level of thing too. Well, if someone but says like, to me, I, "I think that's fun," it's gonna that's gonna be a day for me. Yeah, because I'm going to well, be that's... screaming at my computer yeah, the and, whole time. Yeah. Oh God, the phrase. But I think it's fun. Like when when I'm at like ultimate level of like I'm just I'm trying to explain something to you. It's just like. Oh my god, shit hamper, listen to me. <laughs> you are not doesn't... going to buy a copy of this game ever. Yeah. The audience is not you! <laughs> oh my god, like, pain. Um, like, I'm really trying to be as polite as I can right now. <laughs> but then I, I remember that I used to be that way too. Yeah. Uh, like, it's, it's like you almost have to go that way. And then yeah. someone has to be like, all right, calm down, Junior. Yeah, shush, 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 shush. This is not. You need to step. You need to step back from this. You need to realize this is not about you and your vision. This is if. This is a point where it's like, and also you know, being a young designer, you think that everything you have to do is is your legacy, and you have to do it all <laughs> right now. And and the the concept of like folding up an idea and like putting it back in your pocket for another time is like inconceivable that's a great idea for the sequel yeah right yeah hold on to that one baby and i'm not saying that it's not good it's just we can't do it it, it's not feasible or whatever like i used to have an uncle sam poster that said that's a great idea for the sequel and i put it like in front of my (gasps) desk because people would keep coming up to me with ideas and then i'd point (laughs) at it boop that's amazing (laughs) (laughs) it worked pretty well (laughs) <laughs> I'm just imagining all their faces like the up mm, and then doing the sad Charlie Brown walk away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, t- telling like a baby designer who's super excited. I'm always going to say baby designer. This could be people who's older than you and I should probably say junior, but like I mean I mean like this is their first game. Where I'm just like, "Oh, yeah. you're a baby designer." Um <laughs> on their on the first game and it seems like everything can be done you want it to be perfect right yeah because what if they don't let you do it again annie yeah what if they find out that you're not qualified the (laughs) secret that you're hiding down in the middle of Uh, your heart yeah and then never let you do it again the hellacious feeling of imposter syndrome (laughs) um i i that's another thing i miss about the is is the baby designers like teaching them like it's it's uh it, there's an oral tradition in the industry 
mm-hmm. that I think with the transition to indie, there's a danger of it disappearing, you know? Like, uh, I learned certain things because people learned them from someone who learned it from someone else, right? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I just learned solutions to problems that way that were, quote unquote, common knowledge. And, yeah. like, that just got passed. I mean, if I had to do it all myself, uh, and, you know, and so it's just, I've been missing both ends of that, right? Being able to get mm-hmm. that from people and being able to give it to people. Oh yeah. Well, the thing is, and this is what I find interesting. I mean, like this, this may that may well have been the case, and I would be worried about it about the industry, the the indie industry, the <laughs> indie uh, devs. You know, especially ten years ago, maybe even five years ago. But the amount that I see indies um, come together on on game jams, uh, have yeah. meet up stuff like that. Like it's so important. Or co ops, co ops. Yeah, uh... yeah. Like I'm just super excited about doing like a collab one day. I mean, technically speaking, Dead State was a collaboration with with Iron Tower. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's and that's another thing too. That's that's like the earlier point about when you go indie. Um, <laughs> you know. Stopping yourself on this slope of going like nah, pajamas forever <laughs> um, and like showering pff, not today. I could write like, <laughs> many lines of code in the time it would take me to take a shower. Yeah, like it. It you have to reprioritize. Like there's shit that's not done for you anymore, and one of those is just getting out and talking to people. Like yeah. yeah. Uh, um, it gives you perspective. It inspires you about what you're what you're doing, um, and it and it gives a chance to actually do some sort of knowledge passing. Like, but it requires you to to do that on your own. And it lets it lets you navel gaze and feel productive instead of feeling incredibly <laughs> wasteful, right? Like, yeah. th- there's maybe I I don't know maybe seventy percent of my job, which happens while I'm not sitting at a computer. Yeah, right. Like where the things are just digesting in my head over the over a few days, mm-hmm. and it's hours and hours and hours of work that's going on. But since I'm not sitting in front of a computer, I feel like it doesn't count. Yeah. Oh, I I was so unproductive today because I didn't write any code, but I solved like thirty problems in my head. Yeah, right. I like, thought about a bunch of things. Like I. I yeah, no, I I feel this way. Brian definitely feels that way. But like at the same time, he'll be like, "Oh yeah, I came up, you know, I came up with this new thing, and we'll talk about it." And it's like, I don't know, and I don't think that it's just. I think it's more in your head when you're an indie because again, you see the bills come up and everything. But I I think to it's almost just like a warning I want to throw out to, and and this could be just game development or it could be somebody in any sort of creative endeavor like you are never not working yeah um your 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 brain is is never not thinking about that is important to you and playing games is not the same yeah that's what i told it's still fun it's but it won't be the same so my um my friend my friend scott is awesome and he's a really rad author and he was like oh yeah I, i started working on um you know, stuff in RPG Maker, and he's like, I understand now when I play Skyrim that that thing, I I look at and go, that's Ul- Ulfric Stormcloak. No, that is a puppet that is wearing his identity that is duplicated <laughs> in the others of the game. And I'm like, now you have looked behind the curtain. Like, yeah. no game you play is ever going to be the same again. Like, and that is going to be bad and good. <laughs> I was playing. I was playing Grand Theft Auto Four. And running around, and I I was low on life, mm-hmm. right? And I, there were guys shooting at me, and I was in the middle of an actual level, right? Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, okay, where's the health? Yeah. And, and I know where the health is going to be because where would I put it? Yeah. Right? <laughs> so I said, okay, if I if this were my level, I'd put the health right over there. So I ran over to get it, and I, I was like, there it is. And Mary just started laughing so hard because <laughs> nobody else thinks about it that way. Right? Yeah. You're just sort of like – Oh, there's health exactly where I need it. But no, somebody put it there very specifically because of everything else that's going on in the level. And you can't not think about that mm-hmm. and be a game designer at the same time. Oh, yeah. You, we see, we see the, we have the sort of mental bird's eye view on all this shit. The matrix. We can recode the matrix. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just like, or rather, instead of recoding it, we can uh, bitch about decisions that other people have made and you know, be like, oh, well, we would have done that way f***ing better. <laughs> oh, they <laughs> fell into that trap. Ugh. 
Oh, man, they did this escort mission? Oh, come on. <laughs> Maybe we should cut the escort mission? No, I love escort missions. This is important yeah. because of character. It's story. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, it was good talking to you, yes, Annie. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm so eager for everything, all your output. That sounds and like weird and creepy, but honestly, you make, <laughs> you make fantastic stuff, and anything I can do to empower you to make more fantastic stuff is a uh, is a privilege. Thank you, Annie. And also, everybody, go buy Dead State if you haven't bought it yet. Super please. Or, or if you have bought it, go back and play the crazy huge free update you just got. Oh, yes. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. I'm hitting stop now on the record. I will hit stop, too.